Hello Arts 102 and welcome to the Photoshop demo for the Rhythm Unit. I'm going to grab the Rhythm template and jump into Photoshop here. Alright, so <clears throat> this is the template you will receive for creating your four non-objective designs. So um, first of all, let's just get this out of the way. Um, the designs that we're creating um, you probably have thought of as abstract up to this point. Um, that's not in arts in design terms, that's not technically correct. Abstract is um, an abstracted form is still technically based off something whereas non-objective means it's referring to nothing but itself or in other words it doesn't represent anything at all but design. So <clears throat> Um, basically this doesn't have to look like anything and in fact the um, instructions specifically say you're not drawing a picture of the concept that you're representing so let's start with an example and I will create a marquee around my square so I can constrain my painting to that bounding box and I'll create a new layer for this one and let's try the lazy river. This one's pretty easy. Now the um, tools that you're going to use are actually not at all limited in this assignment. You can use any tools you want. However, uh, what I'm going to show you are the tools that you're most likely to get the, um, the best results from, the most mileage from. And I'm going to start with the paintbrush and I'm just going to use a generic kind of paintbrush. Actually maybe I'll give it a little bit of texture here. I'll use one of the dirtier paintbrushes. And we can use color as much as we want to on this assignment. So grab some colors. Again, the color picker is giving you a hue on this side and it's giving you brightness and saturation in the big box. This is the actual color I have chosen right now. You can see it right over here. The color does not have to be, fledgling designers um, tend to do this, you do not have to use the most saturated brightest color right up in the top right corner. You can, there's a whole area down here that you can kind of play with. So um, I'm going to hit OK on that and that's going to get deposited into my foreground color and I'm going to flip them using this little arrow here that'll switch the foreground and the background. Now I've got what was previously my background in the foreground and what was previously in my foreground is in the background. I'm going to change that foreground color again to a lighter shade of blue. So I've got kind of a light blue and sort of an aquamarine darker blue. So <clears throat> And what I'm going to do is I'm going to periodically flip these colors and just create kind of an interesting effect. And instead of going back here and clicking that flip button every time, I'm going to use the, the shortcut key, which is X. So I can easily flip between those two colors. And I can periodically change, too, if I want to. So I can flip that back to the brighter blue. And let's kind of give that a slightly different hue now. Now what we're going for here is a lazy river and you got to think about what kind of, we're not drawing a lazy river, we're not drawing a scene. Um, what we're doing is we're creating a design that represents the feeling of a lazy river. And to do that from what we learned in our uh, rhythm unit, we know that we want to create a design that is um, legato and we know that we want to make some smooth flowing um, easy lines here just nothing jagged or sharp just very soft and kind of easy to digest and let me reiterate one more time when I do these demos I am not saying these are good designs I'm not saying they're bad either but I'm not saying they're good I'm just saying these are the tools that you'll you'll be using. Okay, so you can even, if you want to fill this up all the way you can, doesn't 
really matter it's your prerogative but I'll fill this up a little bit further get it all the way filled up bring that saturation down some okay so here are some wavy kind of soft lines that don't they're not too aggressive you know they're not too hard on the eyes um, and I wouldn't necessarily call this done and you might just use the brush tool and paint your whole thing like that that's fine um, you can do it that way but I'm gonna show some of these filters up here right up on the filter menu and that's right next to your select menu and these are gonna be a very useful thing to play with for this particular assignment there's a whole bunch of stuff in the filter gallery that you can take a look at and it opens up this filter gallery interface with a couple of different categories well six different categories as you can see here I'm not gonna show all of these because there's no need but I will show some of the different um, filters and these settings are um, like most of the stuff in Photoshop I have no no real specific explanation of what these settings are I just um, encourage you to play with them and see what happens and when you hit a visual that you like then just click OK and apply it so <clears throat> um, that's my cutout filter let's take a look at paint daubs let's crank up the brush size some and bring the sharpness down there's some paint daubs here's a palette knife so these get these get interesting just play with these settings some and just see what you think um, rough pastels it's also on this particular one um, is going to simulate a uh, texture like it's pastels on paper um, and you can set that right here some of these have different textures so there's a sandstone and a burlap um, they're not really what I would call perfect there's probably better ways to do texture than this but um, it's something to play with for for this particular assignment it'll give you some stuff to experiment with you can change the scaling and uh, again I'm just playing with these settings I'm not um, too worried about anything in particular I'm just playing with them to see visually what kind of changes these these settings make and you'll start to get a feel for um, what it is that they're doing um, just in speaking visually here so and there's actually a whole bunch of um, like Conte Crayon got a whole bunch of filters in here this is under the sketch category now um, you can get to those either up here or you can browse them by category over here <clears throat> chrome chrome's really interesting because now this is really starting to look like water um, with the minor problem that it's black and white so uh oh what do we do well let's play with chrome a little bit just for kicks I'm gonna click OK and that will apply that texture well now um, I could paint over it with blue but it's just gonna cover it up and that's not really exactly what I want well up here on your brushes options you've got this thing that says mode and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about mode when I talk about layers but the mode is a way of blending pixels and I'm just gonna say these five modes that begin with darken these will darken everything that you're painting on the ones that begin with lighten will lighten everything that you're painting on and these modes will do a mixture of either darkening or lightening depending on an al algorithm that it figures out somehow <clears throat> um, these four do weird stuff and these four are actually a little bit what I'm interested in these are going to shift one particular channel such as hue saturation or luminosity or in other words lightness so I could just paint on this image 
but change the hue or saturation or luminosity. Um, right now, the saturation is at zero, and the hue is whatever it is. It doesn't matter because if the saturation is at zero, it just comes out gray. Um, if I use this one, though, if I use this color, I can actually kind of colorize Ted Turner style. And this, if I wanted to do this way, would be profitable. Let's put it that way. And now I can kind of go back and do the same thing that I did before. And you can try to stay in the lines if you want, or just kind of do a free form sort of sort of loose kind of image here. Okay, so, and I'm using X to flip the foreground and background color periodically. Um, I'm using the uh, color picker to periodically change the color. Um, another thing I could do is under my brush panel, I could set the color dynamics to dynamically change the foreground and background color and I could turn on some hue jitter. I don't need any brightness jitter, that'll be fine, but I can crank up that hue jitter a little bit, maybe somewhere between 30 and 40 percent. And I can increase these different jitters to kind of randomize the color to some extent. And now every brush stroke I lay down will be a little bit of a randomized selection between my foreground and my background colors and it also might jitter it a little bit in one direction or the other. That's what that hue jitter is doing. It's going to um, take this color and whatever percentage you set, I think I had it at like 30, means it'll go maybe 30 percent in this direction or 30 percent in this direction. Just picks a random number and moves the hue slider not permanently. It doesn't actually change your foreground and background colors. It's just that particular stroke. So, and we can also bring down the opacity and get a little bit more of a subtle effect. Actually, I'm going to fill up the canvas with color before I do that, and then we can then we can start um, bringing that opacity down. Let's put it at, I don't know, 30. Just, that's just an arbitrary number. I mean, it doesn't matter if you have my, your numbers exactly the same as mine, but um, just to uh, have something to play with here. In fact, I think I'll take it down even a little further, maybe 15. Okay, so I've got a size jitter going on, I've got a hue jitter going on, and I'm just kind of dabbing bits of um, noise and dirt into this that will <clears throat> create a texture over time. As you can see it's really starting to break up and it's becoming a, a very soft smooth flowing texture. Um, would I call this done? Well, that's your prerogative but I think there's more that could be done to this. So let me show you another filter up here. If I click on the filter set again, um, and actually, before I do that, let me show you something here. This first command on the filter set is going to reactivate the last filter that you chose. Because you can stack these up, you can apply them over and over again. Usually you don't want this. This first one is going to say um, filter gallery and Basically, it's just going to reapply that chrome texture using the same settings that we just used. I'm going to undo that. Actually, I'll use the shortcut key Command Alt Z or Control Alt Z on PC. And I'm going to click on Filter and I'm going to show you Liquify. That is a filter that's going to give you some mileage on this particular assignment. So give Liquify a try, definitely. Um, and right away I want to turn on advanced mode because I want to get to these different options and it gives you a few more brush options. So starting with forward warp, um, forward warp basically it kind of treats your 
your image like finger paint. So you can take these pixels and I can use those brush size shortcut keys, the left and right brackets. You can take the forward warp and you can kind of just squish these pixels around and this is starting to become a little less legato. If I'm not careful with this I can end up with a real a real mess of a of an image that's um, starting to get a little bit more active and a little bit more um, staccato really. That's that's where this is headed at this point. So I'm gonna undo all that right here. The restore all button will change that back to what I started with. I'm gonna get a little bit bigger brush and just kinda gently swirl this just a tad. So go easy on this stuff. Less is more. And a lot of times what happens, as you can see around the edges here, is it pulls up the edges a little bit and it actually um, reveals the canvas underneath. And you'll probably want to go back in and paint over that when you're done. So this is going to be kind of difficult to paint. It'll look funky. So I'm actually going to push that over a little bit. The one on the bottom isn't bad. That That's easily fixed. So I'll leave that. Um, so that's the forward warp tool. Um, another one that's fun to play with is the twirl clockwise tool. And this pretty much is just going to create a swirl. And if you go too far with this, again, um, any of these liquify filters, if you go too far with it, it starts to get a little, a little much. So really turns it into uh, a very um, active piece pretty quick, very active image. And again, you can see this little bit of canvas has been revealed because the image kind of got ripped open from from that forward, uh, from the clockwise twirl. So I'll undo that. I'll give it just a little bit of twirl. And we'll try that. Give it a little more up here. Okay. Um, um, I'm going to click OK and we're going to come back to this. So I click OK to commit the changes and first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in the rest of these. I'm going to change brushes to a round brush. And I'm going to turn off the shape dynamics because I don't want the size jittering so much. Um, I'm going to leave my color dynamics on though because I welcome those random color changes that'll kind of help help out the the image. Now I've got a bit of a problem with this brush now and the problem is that I didn't go back up here to my options to change the mode and the opacity. The mode is on colorize and the opacity is on 15%. So I want to change that opacity back to 100% and I'm going to change the mode to normal. That's the top one. And it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to filter over this some more. I'm just going to kind of you could add a few layers to that if you want to. That'll work. Okay, now like I said, you can stack these. Um, now, I don't want to go, again, I don't want to use this liquify because the um, the last filter used is uh, going to just apply the same liquify that I just did and leave it at that. That's not what I want. Step backward. Um, I'm going to go back into liquify the one that says liquify dot 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 is the one that I want specifically. Let me show that again. Filter. I want this one. Liquify dot dot dot. I don't want the first one that has the command F next to it. That's the last liquify. So I want to get into the dialog again and use this. Okay, so I'm going to show the pucker and bloat tool. Just a couple more things to play with. Pucker 
it's basically going to suck all the pixels in towards the center and um, this is a really fun way to be immature with people's photographs if you want to make somebody look stupid you can put somebody's face in here and pucker their face so it makes them look real silly um, and the bloat tool will just push all the pixels away from the center just kind of the opposite of pucker and I think I'm gonna swirl these this little bit right here just for a little extra effect So, and this is uh, this composition is now starting to get a little more active than I care for for a lazy river. Um, but again, just showing you the tools. So I'm going to click OK. <clears throat> and once again, we've got just a couple little holes around the edge. Actually, I think just this one. So I'm going to turn my brush tool back on and just paint over that. Okay, that'll be fine. And you can just you can keep stacking and stacking. I can go back to my filter under the filter gallery. Um, I don't want to apply chrome again, but let's take a look at the distort. I've got this glass and this ocean ripple. Oh, look at that. Um, the glass is really uh, really distorts it quite a bit, but I can take that distortion down and increase the smoothness. And yeah, we'll just go with frosted texture. I'm going to increase the scale of my texture. And that gives you a little bit more of a, a jittered um, kind of squishy look. But it is a little, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it's a little too active, really. It's just, it's too. Uh, it's starting to get a little violent. So now I can take a look at this ocean ripple. We're looking for water, so why not ocean ripple? And that's not too bad. If I bring the ripple magnitude up too far, it really gets just a little bit out of control. So less is more with these with these guys and yeah we'll try that we'll click OK so and again you can just keep going and going as long as you want there's go nothing stopping you from going right back to filter and kinda of pushing these pixels around some more smearing stuff around change your brush size periodically too and you can mess with these the, sh the pressure and the density too I'm gonna bring the density down and it just kind of kind of reduces the effect a little bit blow some of this again okay click OK And that is the kind of procedure that you're probably going to do on this particular assignment. The Lazy River should probably be a tad lazier than this. It's fairly legato, but it's maybe just a little, you know, especially around these areas. This kind of stuff, that's getting a little spiky there. It's getting a little jagged. So make it probably a little lazier than that but those are the tools that are going to help you so I'm going to deselect that I'm going to use the shortcut key this time command D or control D on a PC 
let's make a new layer and let's call this one seismic event and let's turn on the marquee tool make our selection okay so once again I can choose my colors and I'm gonna go with some hot active colors here now a seismic event strikes me as a violent event and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw some straight lines I'm using the shift key to constrain my lines so that they're guaranteed to be straight and let me see if I still got my hue jitter on I think I do I'm gonna take that down just a little bit whoa there we go and I'm gonna bring up my brightness jitter a little bit this again this is just randomizing the hue saturation and brightness so that you can have a little bit of um, irregularity in your design there's lots of ways to do this you don't need to be given me carbon copies of what I'm doing but just experiment and play with it think about ways that are interesting Ooh. to approach this let's turn off color dynamics let's get a black line in there Okay, and I'm going to go back to my liquify filter again. This is a really good way of, you can really get a lot of mileage out of this liquify tool in, in this rhythm assignment that we're doing. And you can take this and just bloop. Um, a lot of people use this tool as a way of making um, kind of wavy designs, but you can get kind of staccato with this you can get you can get it pretty spiky and bring your brush size down some and you'll get these little spikes um, let's see here I'm gonna try to bring my brush pressure up a little bit and there we go now I'm getting some some serious seismic activity going on and I'm just drawing the lines left and right here in fact I, I probably could have even held down shift to get them straight I didn't think about it but if you hold down shift it will constrain your brush to go straight And again, it might be profitable to go into the filter menu, take a look at the filter gallery. And we can find some very interesting some very interesting ways of remixing these these little designs here. Torn edges. my color some of those filters take out the color so let's go whoops let's go filter oh fooey cancel cancel let's go filter <laughs> filter gallery students like the glowing edges oh, that's not a great example of glowing edges we'll see if we can come up with another example of glowing edges Sometimes students like the neon glow and the plastic wrap can do some interesting stuff too, especially on your legato designs. I'm not seeing anything else I really want to apply to the seismic event though, so I'm going to leave that one alone. I'm going to deselect with Command D, and uh, I'll do one more. Oop. 
Let's make this one the idling Harley. And I'm not going to keep belaboring the new layer selection, all that jazz. You've heard it enough times. So let's grab a brush. Um, see what we got here. I'm going to give a uh, spatter brush a try if I can find a good one. That one will be interesting. And I'm going to pick another hot active color. This one's going to be pretty red. And I'm going to increase my brush size with the right bracket and just draw a few um, a few splashes of dirt here. Let's get some black in there for some smoke. I'm going to take the opacity down up in my options up here. Um, I'll go with, eh, let's go even a little lower. Let's go with uh, 30. I'm just keeping the mode on normal for now. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of create some smoke clouds. And I'm going to vary the size of my brush by quite a bit. I'm making a larger and smaller brush with my bracket keys here. And I could very easily just use the um, the jitter command to do that. And with this low opacity you can kind of build up some little smoke clouds and try another brush here just to uh, change the <clears throat> dynamic of the noise a little bit so I'm just kinda hitting the left and right brackets as I do this just to keep keep the um, the brush size kinda interesting kind of keep the variation going for visual interest so this this is starting to become an interesting texture and um, this is a perfectly legitimate approach to any of these designs just paint it up and show off some drawing skills or if you have no drawing skills just work it up and give it a try. Practice. Practice makes perfect. I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm not claiming to be an amazing drawer, but this kind of stuff is is fun to play with and it'll get you some mileage. Um I don't I don't know if it even really needs any filters, but um you know, just to play with it a little bit, let's let's take a look at what liquify would look like. I'll turn on the ball the bloat tool and I'm going to increase my brush size. Let's see what this would look like. Oh, maybe a little too much there. Kind of looks like it's exploding. Too bad these can't be animated. So, like I said, interesting. Gives you some interesting stuff to play with. And I might go back and work this up a little more. Set my brush back to a kind of an orangey color. Oh, and let's get the opacity back up. Notice I didn't go up to a hundred there. I'm I'm now kind of leaving a little bit of the background. There's lots of good approaches to this to this design problem. 
I, again, I don't want to see carbon copies of what I'm demoing here. Um, try to come up with your own approach, but these again are some good tools to play with. Let's do one more bloat. Actually, I'll do a, a little series of bloats and just kind of just give it a little bit. There we go. And that will give you enough to play with for the rhythm assignment. You're not limited by your tools on this one. Um, these aren't the required tools. These are just the ones that are probably going to give you the most mileage. You're welcome to use the shape tools that we've been trying out if you would like or if you want to experiment with something else, go for it, as long as you end up with a rhythmic, non-objective composition that feels like an idling Harley, and feels like a seismic event, and feels like a lazy river. That's what you're trying to go for. Now, you, again, you don't draw a picture of a Harley or a river. You create a composition that feels like a Harley that's idling, and feels like a river that's flowing lazily. So. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, obviously uh, post your questions in the Q&A forum, and I look forward to seeing your project.